Hello, it's Scott Manley here with episode 18 of Interstellar Quest and Archibald Kerman is going to the moon. He is going to the moon in this giant overbuilt rocket because he has his friend Sean Kerman trapped on the surface with barely enough fuel to get onto a suborbital trajectory. There we go. We're looking from the, in the cockpit of this spacecraft. This is the Mark II cockpit mod. Uh, I showed in my KerbalCon presentation that the, um, the standard Mark II cockpit has no interior. Well, just so happens that someone in Kerbal Spaceport has made a marvelous interior, and we'll see a lot more of that later. But meanwhile, let's take a look at this rocket. It has those giant solid rocket boosters on the side. We have a 2.5 meter core with a fairing surrounding the cockpit. You will get to see more of that spacecraft once we get up there, but this thing, the theme here is basically it is completely overbuilt. Now, originally when uh, the rocketry team had heard that Sean was trapped on the surface of the moon, they just said, oh fine, we'll send up a spacecraft, land and pick you up. But you know what? Sean was concerned about his secret mission and he said, no, we have to bring the whole capsule back. And that seems kind of strange because surely it would be easier just to pick Sean up. But no, he absolutely insists the capsule must be rescued. That meant changing the plans to rescue him. So this is the current form that we have here. It is a large rocket. It probably has more Delta V than it actually needs. But uh, we don't want to have two people trapped up there. No, we want to have... We want to bring one of them back, and Archibald Kerman is the Kerbal to do it. Archibald Kerman, of course, named after uh, Archibald Haddock, Captain Haddock from the Tintin uh, stories. Anyway, look, we're getting up uh, about 1.1 kilometers per second and accelerating at a, what, about 1.5 G, 50 kilometers up. Doing a pretty good job here. We should probably uh, bring up the cockpit here. There we go. Bring this out. Now, you can just about see the top of that. It looks a bit like one of the towers from Lord of the Rings. I'm trying to think of the name of it. The one uh, that, uh, uh, Isengard. It looks like the tower at Isengard with those giant spiky bits at the top, if you remember. You'll see it a little better. You see that? It looks kind of like a spiky thing. Obviously, this is. these are struts or these are structures that are supposed to catch the capsule in space. That's the plan. Um, uh, Archibald Kerman will have to maneuver his spacecraft close to this and grab it with that and then boost it upwards. I had thought about using something like Kerbal Attachment System, but ultimately I just went with this because uh, I was lazy, really. I, I thought this was a kind of interesting design and it looked kind of cool with those lights sticking out in the front. It looks kind of like a stag beetle or something. I wonder if they have stag beetles on Kerbin. Uh, maybe not. Who knows? Anyway, uh, below that we've got a couple of other rocket stages. This is using the, um, it's using the skipper on there. So this is the one of the first ones that you unlock. And I'm obviously accelerating up in a an arc that will uh, keep my again. Once again, we're going to be careful to leave the stage behind. So I'm I'm trying to keep my periaps inside the atmosphere. That's why I'm accelerating. You see, if I lift the nose up here above the uh, prograde vector, then that will tend to suppress the altitude of the periaps. Just want to keep it down below uh, 68 kilometers, but honestly, I don't have time to watch these things go through the cycle. Ah, 40 kilometers, that'll be good enough. There we go. And with the main engine cut out, it's time to detach the upper stage, get uh, everything deployed for the rest of the transfer to the moon. We can take our time here, get those solar panels deployed. Anyway, it's on to four times time acceleration. Old me will probably be talking about more astronaut pooping. We have a long way to go, and uh, you'll notice that we started on the dark side of the planet, and truthfully, the reason is because we can't actually pick. We have to get to the moon as quickly as possible. Archibald Kerman, or sorry, Sean Kerman is uh, on the surface. with. Oh, he has 10 days worth of life support. However, the limiting factor here is that his spacecraft uh, needs power, and uh, the power supply on board the spacecraft is somewhat limited. So during those lunar nights, he is going to be getting gold. So uh, we want to rescue him before hypothermia kicks in. 
But yeah, we're gonna just put ourselves into an orbit. You 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 don't need to see this. I mean, well, you do need to see this because I want to show you the whole process of all this happening. Uh, most of the transfer was supposed to be done with that big fat Rockamax tank and that low profile engine from the B9 pack, but. Uh, Ultimately, I ended up with way more fuel than I needed. There was a second engine and fuel tank on there. I was going to ditch the Rockamax tank and only use the uh, and use the smaller spacecraft for the actual rendezvous because we need it to be nimble, fast and nimble so it can rendezvous very quickly with a spacecraft which will be on a suborbital trajectory. There is the target on the moon. Now we uh, make some adjustments to the orbit to make sure it flies over the top here. So what we do is we make this adjustment. You see that? So we want to pass over the landing site so that we are in the same plane when they launch. You'll see the uh, see the, the vector for the burn is at 90 degrees to the orbit. So we come around 34 seconds, burn downwards for for nine seconds, I guess. This is all very important. You want to minimize the amount of messing around that you have to do because if you are going to be chasing after a spacecraft on a suborbital trajectory, every second brings you one second closer to death and splattering Sean all over the surface. Now, in the worst case scenario, Sean could always just jump out and use EVA, but he seems very attached to that spacecraft. Maybe he might just trust that the landing legs will secure him or will absorb the impact once more. So there we go. We're going to drop the orbit just a little as well because we want to pass over the site as low as possible. Anyway, back to old me. Okay, so we are ready to go. Sean, target that. You're going to have to get yourself up roughly to the same altitude, as much velocity as you can, and roughly in the same plane. Now, based on the math, I think I have about 520 meters per second, which is not enough to make lunar orbit, and it's not enough to get me in the air or in the skies long enough that I can accelerate it up to orbital velocities by using the RCS, uh, the EVA pack. So this is one, there's one chance, we are go. And this is going to be hard. So I'm doing this, the nav ball is in target mode, which means the velocity vector is going to be hugely misleading. I'm going to be looking at my vertical velocity and I'm going to be looking at the velocity vector here. I want to try and keep the velocity vector and the position vector uh, aligned in the same vertical plane, right? So what I want to do is keep the north or the, the straight up, the zenith vector, the location vector and the retrograde vector all on the same plane which uh, is a fancy way of saying keep everything all in line so that we don't have to do any plane changes because anything like that will take time and time uh, translates to getting closer to death when you are seconds from death you do not want to be hanging around and reading a book and cooling your heels no but Sean Kerman, he is enjoying this nevertheless he knows this is going to be a good ride even if he's going to have to give up control if he's going to have to let Archibald trust himself to the Archibald Kerman, Sean Kerman, he has nerves of steel. He, the nerves forged from steel. That probably explains why he didn't get squished when he generated hundreds of Gs in that impact. So, we're, this is t a relative velocity. So by saying it's like uh, 300 and something, that means we've maybe got 200 meters per second velocity. This thing accelerate really slowly. I, I'm pretty sure that we have enough delta V if this thing landed with a full fuel tank as it was intended to. I certainly is not going to be able to do it without that. And there we go. Okay, so we're going to try and decrease the intersection here. We're going to try and make them as close as possible. We can use the map mode a little, but honestly, uh, yeah, I don't know what the best way to view. Well, <laughs> I think uh, you can see that thing is passing slightly south of the flag marker, so it's not by much, but uh, you know, any, every second counts. And now you notice that the velocity vector is dropped below the plane, which is a good sign. It means that we're going more or less the right way. And 180 meters per second, we're definitely getting close. Our fuel is burning out now as well. We're down to less than five unit five kilograms or 50 whatever 50 units of liquid fuel i have to figure out what the mass units are anymore four three two two one point something or 
Almost out, almost out. Less than one unit left. The target is five kilometers out and burnout. Now we have to switch control to the recovery tug. Well, that's a pretty good intersect. We should switch, can't switch vessel, so I'll throttle up. Great, come on, throttle down and pointing the right way. Switch targets, switch two, switch two, come on. Come on, time is money, time is death. Come on, come on, come on, come on, thank you. Okay, 3.5 kilometers out. We need to get in close towards this. Again, unfortunately, we are on the dark side of this of the moon. We have no option here. So we're already flying towards the target. So what I really need to do is kind of correct my vector so we pass as close to the target as possible. Here's the trick, right? So we're trying to slide the uh, retrograde vector, the negative velocity vector, make sure it's headed close to the target, and uh, make sure also that we're gonna slow things down as much as possible when we get in. So you see the camera switch there, the camera angle switch, because we are now on a suborbital trajectory, right? That is gonna be annoying. Uh, okay, test shuttle moon lander ship. Uh, we're moving in at 40 meters per second. We still are going upwards, which is a good sign. It means we have a little more uh, leeway, but eventually we will start plummeting back towards the moon. And at that point, we better have picked this thing up and uh, be making some attempt to accelerate it back. 100 meters out, 20 meters per second. Okay, now maybe... Gotta, okay, slow down, slow down, slow down. Get the vector killer velocity and fly past it. No, missed it, missed it, missed it. Come back, come back, come back. Where are you? Oh, I'm glad I'm not doing this in IVA mode. That would just be really complicated. So we want to make sure we catch it on the right side because this is a pusher setup, right? We can't uh, push this on the wrong side. That would be really frustrating. Uh, <laughs> so if we rendezvous... We're going to have to rotate it and it doesn't really have any active grabs and now we are starting to fall back towards the surface. My altitude, oh, the altitude is almost starting to fall. There, now we're falling back towards the surface. Okay, so the pressure is really on 10, 6, six meters out and 7, oh, wait, we're now sliding backwards again. Okay. I'm just still using the main engines for this. RCS, RCS, bring this in. I'm going to just keep that thing attached because... I think the extra fuel will give us... You know, honestly, I, I think we're doing just fine, right? I know I'm making it sound excited, but honestly, I think we're doing just fine. Ah, uh, this is just going to move in a little faster. Go forwards, not backwards. Oh, uh, just making sure that we're lined up here. We're sliding upwards, and there's some problem with the rotation. There is only two RCS jets on this. I've used the B9 RCS system. So RCS system, I said it again. I used the B9RC system. There we go. That'll shut you guys up. But I shall now talking about start talking about ATM machines. Ha ha. Uh, <laughs> let, let's try and grab this thing. So we're going to come up behind it with some surprise butt sex. Uh, no, worse for some... Uh, we're going to come up behind it and give it a little push. Push forwards into a frontiers out of here. Look at that. Beautiful, huh? all the claws around it. We need to just rotate a little, try to get inside. This is really hard. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. We got the pointy thing. We're sticking the pointy thing up its butt. That's not good. And uh, it's really starting to fall towards the surface quite quickly, really picking that speed up. But at least we are below it. So our velocity is, we're pointing the right direction. We just need to get in there. Okay, that looks like, that looks good, that looks good, that looks good, that looks good. Start, start thrusting forwards using, I'm using the RCS. Stay in there, do not fall out, do not fall out, do not fall out. Come on, stay in. Stay with me, Sean. Sean, I told you to hold still. Why are you not holding still while I come up and give you a push? Uh, I do not think, if I, I'm going to reverse out and come back in and try grabbing it side on. I thought this would thing would sit nicely, but no, now I'm going to do it from the side. There we go. Excellent. Now full on engine power. We have to kill our vertical velocity and get ourselves up to orbital speeds. I'm not going to do it too much because I want to be sure. Oh, what a beautiful view that is, huh? 
Uh, this is a really nice cockpit, I have to say. The, whoever created that cockpit, you have my commendations. I wish it needs to be included in the core game, if you ask me. Uh, I, as I said, uh, I made my, I've made my Kerbal Pritcon video, but I haven't yet published it, obviously, because Kerbalcon hasn't happened yet. Oh, and hey, uh, watch the map going nuts as it shows two orbits that are so close to... They are merely two meters apart and being pushed. The map was going crazy like I expect the audience to go crazy when they see me doing my crazy escapades at KerbalCon or something like that. No, I don't know. I'm sure you will all just thumbs down because it'll be absolutely terrible and exploit driven and things like that. Uh, yeah, so now we pretty much have... We're just trying to get this thing into a stable orbit. Uh, we've killed our vertical velocity. That should put us into a more or less stable velocity, especially at this, this speed now, right? So we've rescued the spacecraft. It's still stuck in orbit. We now have to figure out how to get back to Kerbin. So I figure what we'll do is travel all the way around one more time until we get to the perfect ejection angle. Uh, oh, yeah, that uh, periaps is a little low. That's I'm kind of concerned about the periaps being low. If it's that low, we could hit a high spot on the moon. So, um, well, okay, so what I can do is I can point the nose down just a little and burn a little more. So by burning downwards as you're moving upwards, what you tend to do is lift your periaps and drop your apoaps. So that should help a little. Actually, your apoaps will probably go up. And never mind. I mean, whatever, we're just trying to stop ourselves crashing into the lunar surface because that would be bad. And, uh, yeah, old me forgot about the fact that... Uh, he would have to sit in orbit very close to this spacecraft for, like, a whole orbit. And if he stopped thrusting, then the spacecraft would fall away and he would have to re-rendezvous. So this was kind of an annoying situation, partly also because he couldn't leave... He could leave that in there, but as soon as he time accelerated, or as soon as I time accelerated... Oh, God, I'm talking about myself in this third person. As soon as I accelerated, <laughs> the time accelerated the objects would just phase through each other and I would lose them. So I couldn't time accelerate. So, um, yeah, that was a really stupid thing to do. So instead, I think what I ultimately realized was I have a ridiculous amount of fuel in this spacecraft because I still have that large tank. So instead of just slowly thrusting and holding this there, oh, there, I'm losing it, so I have to adjust get myself back in obviously this is all at four times normal speed so it looks like i'm super awesome at this game when in fact i was starting to realize that i'd set myself up for the most tedious gameplay ever they're turning my uh oh yeah looks pretty cool like that doesn't it i like the fact that we have this little window at the front that looks like a site or something like that um I can't imagine anyone would build a real space can you know, canopy in a space plane like that but who knows uh, yeah, here it is coming back in once more, trying to keep everything straight. Yeah, I realize that, you know, if I just burn straight up, then I can escape. That's really what the realization was. Instead of trying to follow this thing through an orbit, I should have just continued burning straight when I originally picked it up because I was going the right direction. Thankfully, I have tons of fuel so I can just pick it up angle the nose upwards and burn, 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 burn. You notice I'm keeping the engines on as I'm doing this because I want it to stay in there. Now bring the thrust up, 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 and I'm doing the least fuel efficient escape from the moon possible, I think. Uh, but again, it doesn't matter. Screw fuel, fuel efficiency. I have so much fuel, it doesn't matter. I totally overspec this mission and uh, it's going to be a success. Uh, it will also be thumbing the nose at the aviation team, who of course underspec their mission. Uh, even although they would have had, they wouldn't have had problems if they had uh, put their separate radar the right way around. They could have also uh, kept the. They could have probably dropped a decoupler or two as well, saved themselves a little bit of uh, extra baggage. And there we are. Return trajectory achieved. Sean Kerman is going home. Archibald Kerman is going home. The only thing left to do is uh, say goodbye, so that we can uh, so that we can finally uh, separate our positions because we don't want to be coming down at the same time. The game does not like that, and uh, it's very easy to fall more than two and a half kilometers away from each other. Uh, Sean is using this plugin as well to make to let you uh, transfer stuff into the command capsule. This is uh, what it looks like returning from the 
from space. We uh, decided to leave some of the hardware on because you know what? It makes more fireworks. Look at that. I think that was like solar panels and stuff exploding. There's the engine overheating. Engines in Deadly Reentry actually are, are surprisingly good at protecting you. Never mind heat shields. Landing on the surface with a little bit of an engine power just to make sure that he makes it back safely. Archibald Kerman has a uh, become a hero to the well to the Kerbal people because he's pretty awesome at doing this also bits broke off again I think that was one of the things that exploded were those struts a successful rescue I wonder where Sean landed well Sean is going to try landing uh, again without ditching the whoop well there's stuff getting exploded the landing gear did destroyed and uh, I'm not sure what else exploded but uh, yeah, you see, we could have just kept that decoupler or not had that decoupler on there and used it, uh, saved a bit of mass, and uh, we would have successfully returned to the surface. Uh, okay, I guess we ditched that. It wasn't necessary. The mistake ship electric charge is running out. Anyway, recovered from that mission, we got another, I mean, we got a whole bunch of science, so we can actually go down and take a look at one more node. So... We've filled out this tier, and remember, I'm forcing myself to fill out all the tiers completely. This is the one that I want to go for, Advanced Science Tech, because it includes two science instruments plus the lab from KSP Interstellar. And the lab actually will generate science for me, apparently. I, I haven't looked to see how it works because uh, the purpose of the lab has changed somewhat in KSP Interstellar. Originally, it kind of did everything. It did all the refining. Uh, the set the nose cones now from uh, aerodynamics nose cones that used to be avionics systems. Those will generate uh, science as well. They'll do atmospheric sampling and all, all that. Uh, there's multiple versions of the atmospheric science package as well. And uh, there's a gravity detector, which is really, really useful. So we have unlocked more science. We shall do some more. But uh, we'll see that all happening in future episodes. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.